Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. So we're going to do another round of Fortinato. Uh, before we do that, uh, we do have a survey that we would like folks who attended the Dev Summit uh, this uh, time around to fill out if you get a chance. Um, Anne has helpfully put the link for that on uh, the wiki page. So you can find that on the wiki page. Uh, we'll try to drop the link in IRC and other channels as well later today. Um, particularly, we like your feedback about how the hallway track is or isn't working and kind of the schedule changes we try to make this time. Uh, we're also hoping to be in person uh, the next time we get to do one of these. I mean, certainly in Euro, but also in uh, the fall in the Bay Area, and hopefully we'll be in person next year at Canada. Um, and then to start this section, um, I actually wanted to go to the end and talk about it, things that people might want to remove, and then we can spend the rest of their time going through the need and want sections that are a little more unicorns and roses. Um, so I don't know if you want to scroll down, Ed, and we can go through the list of things that people um, have wanted to think about removing and see if there's update on any of these or if there are ones that we want to add to the list or if there are ones we need to remove from the list. So it looks like Warner, you're on several of these. We'll start off with you. Um, I think Ed has also expressed interest in firewire support going the way of the Dodo. Um, <laughs> yeah, it has a number of locking issues that are starting to affect CAM um, as well. Um, and not too many people are using it and nobody's really maintaining it. So we should kill it. Okay, so are you, I don't think we've marked it deprecated or anything. So <laughs> we realistically- that's the first step. I'll mark it deprecated and post to Arch um, saying, hey, we're going to remove Firewire from 14 and see what happens uh, there. I'll let Manu talk about ARMv6. Um, I think it's a time to, to let it go. Um, there's not a lot of code in the kernel. The real benefit from ARMv6 retirement is package builders and all the downstream duplication that we have. Um, Okay, and the, we should move up maybe next to ARMv6. You have one further down here, which is um, different ARM SOCs. Right, right. And we need to be basically each major release, we should go through the list and see what is still relevant and what is causing problems. I don't have anything specific in mind, but it's, it's a discussion I like to have with the other ARM developers. Um, you know, do we still need the Panda board support and some ancient TI stuff? Um, you know, it, does that still work? You know, those, those kinds of questions. And I don't have good answers right now. So I'll kick that off um, probably later in the year. Okay. So did you I want can, to jump I, in? I can talk about that. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that I've killed everything that needed to be killed. And... Everything right now is either working or they are working. Most of, most of the stuff should be working. So, okay. But yeah, I, I agree <clears throat> that we should have uh, some kind of uh, tradition, uh, like two, three, four months before release, just look at every SOC that we support. And does it make sense to steal at them? But the things that right now we are mostly okay. Yeah, I think I think you're right. <clears throat> I couldn't think off of the top of my head like I've been able to in the past. Of oh yeah, we need to gun for you know see if people are still using this for this. Yeah, I, I've removed a lot of images and I've removed a lot of crappy SOC supports. And yeah, I think we're mostly good. Okay, and uh, so the next one on my lips is bootloader fourth support. Um, I don't know what that PR is that needs to be solved. It, um, Let me look real quick. Oh, no, too, no too big fourth works is the title. But this is for non-EFI. Yeah, I mean, we're not planning to kill that uh, just yet though, right? No, we're not planning on killing non-EFI. <clears throat> no. What is this? I guess it doesn't buy you much to just kill fourth for EFI. Yeah, I mean, we'd kill fourth altogether. Um, and Juniper has 
made requests in the past that asked us to stay the hand, but they also have their own forks. So that also needs to kind of be resolved. And the um, uh, that particular PR um, doesn't need to be solved first. If, you know, it, <clears throat> Well, I think the particular PR means you can no longer pixie boot without EFI. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking this was a different one. Um, yeah, we should look at it. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, we have we have too many things in in boot voter these days, and so if you want to pixie boot, you might need to build a custom uh loader efi or because the non efi x86 loader has a limit a hard limit of about 500k well and, and it gets worse with pixie because usually the pixie roms allocate like we we honor what what they've done but they carve out they, they grab some memory right at the top of the 640k window to use for their private little memory area and so it ends up being a bit smaller um, and what happens in the loader when it, it basically the stack starts overriding like the, the data section and you just don't know until things go haywire. It's like, it's just, you know, <laughs> there's still like limits or anything. It just starts corrupting things and then it goes off. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So somebody, if somebody wants, I, I think, I think the bottom line, if somebody wants to maintain this, maintain this um, ability longer term, we're going to have, we're going to, you know, even the uh, um, even the fourth loader will run out of space eventually. Um, Lua is just a little bit bigger and triggering the problem, but um, you know we're going to have to solve it some other way, I think, because you know Lua is the first one. So yeah, I, I mean, continuing to support non EFI booting is going to have to be a little more esoteric like you might have to build a strip down or have different profiles of what pixie loaders you get or something right well you know it's it's, it's the chinese menu if you order one from every column it's not going to work you know you can build yeah. a loader with any one or three of these features but if you try to do all 10 it's that we wanted to do for efi because it's easy and convenient it's not going to work so <clears throat> you know and pixie is one of the things that um uh bumps the basically bumps the effective limit down as well so okay <clears throat> and I, right. I think only um there's only one driver and that's twe and we might bring back twa uh, as far as cam goes um those are the only ones that i'm aware of but i need to go and audit the list of older drivers. The more of these that we eliminate, the more um, odd special cases we don't have to worry about in CAM. And, um, is, you know, it's a lot of these, you know, have been broken for a long time, uh, potentially as well, just because uh, since about FreeBSD 9, CAM has moved pretty quickly in terms of locking and whatnot. And not all uh, SIMs have been um, well tested since then. We might also want to put on this uh, on 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 the list, and this is a conversation we'll need to have outside of here. Um, we'll need to put uh, the um, uh, target driver. Um, uh, CTL has largely supplanted it, and target or targ four is not. Um, well maintained and is primarily for older cards that we're actually actively removing. So we need to have a conversation um, about that uh, probably on FreeBSD SCSI or FreeBSD Arch um, to assess um, whether or not we want to keep it. You know, I don't I don't know one way or another right now, but it came up in a conversation I was having with Ken and PHK. Okay, I've added you know. to the list. Yeah, and so that's, I think that's all of mine. Uh, hopefully I didn't ramble too much on that. And you're fine. Um, next we have Telnet D. Does someone want to, and Adrian was the person, but I think um, 
that's not here today and I think wasn't here the last time either. Mm -hmm. um, does someone want to kill Telnet D? Not the client, the server. I, I, I think that we added Adrian because it was a potential user. Oh, he was the one who wanted to keep it? Yes, I think so. Yeah, if you're making a router image that fits in like the 16 megabytes of flash, then SSH is too big. I, yeah. Couldn't you just get it and, from ports? Uh, yeah, maybe he can. And also, uh, I think he switched his uh, Wi Fi uh, test lab from MIPS to some onboard. Uh, so maybe he doesn't, maybe he does have a little bit more space right now. So he can put SSH. We could move, I mean, when we, when we would take things out, we move them to ports. So, like, people can get to. I, I would comment Telnet, Telnet D and Telnet, the Telnet client share a source tree. Yeah. So there's not a lot of point in removing Telnet D if, if we're going to keep Telnet, which we think we generally will forever. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Uh, we might, uh, John, it, we might want to, uh, this, this brings up a problem uh, of how small can we go? Um, in terms of you know what does FreeBSD support and what are developers expected to make it work under? I don't know. I don't think that's a discussion point here. But at each, it's been suggested that at each release we say this is the bottom that we're targeting for this release. Um, it was some of the justification we used for removing some of the early smaller MIPS for twelve or thirteen. I forget when we removed them, but that's also something we might want to look at on an ongoing basis. Um, and I don't know where we should do that. I just, you know, it, it is, it might help us more easily uh, deal with some of these things, but. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I, th I think that's a reasonable discussion we should have. Um, you know, if you've got 32 megabytes of memory or 16 megabytes of memory, we're just not gonna try and support that anymore. Uh, the, the, the the smallest kernel I've the smallest system I booted on yeah. recently is 128 meg. Yeah, and 64 would be possible if you wanted to run uh, it as a pure router and maybe be able to SSH in. But you know, SynMail is off the table. And then, unless we're actively building and validating that we can still run and boot in that that size, then there's not much. Like, there's no point in just um, you know not saying that we're fine, but not actually testing it because it'll just, it'll just break. So um, science is here. So, so um, regarding Telnet D, I already have a port and it's called uh, net slash FreeBSD Telnet D. Uh, I've already ported FTPD. So we can remove those if we choose to. Having said that, uh, package NG would, I mean, a pack, uh, package Thanks, base, base would, uh, would, uh, would uh, resolve a lot of these too, right? So if we want to keep them in base, we can, but, uh, uh, you know, assuming that uh, we, we go with uh, package base and then we can, we, we could have meta packages that uh, provide a, a baseline and then maybe a networking meta package that includes say your baseline networking and then full networking, like uh, yeah. including all the telnet and that type of thing. So we, we have options. And yeah. the fact that it's in ports, um, it's your option now. Um, Doug Grabson is part of the um, uh, container D and, and related um, uh, container runtime stuff um, has looked at a minimal FreeBSD basis to user land using package base. Um, and we've been talking or looking at um, sort of ensuring that everything that is needed to make the minimal FreeBSD user land runtime um, is what's contained in the runtime uh, package. And I mean, that's, that's pretty much workable. So I think package base will be the solution um, for yeah. these sorts of, uh, you know, I want the minimum um, yeah, root, root file system size. Yeah, so it is the ultimate solution, but if we choose to uh, remove both FTP and Telnet D, we can. Uh, we can also remove the client because I've also ported that over to ports. 
So we do have the client and the server and ports. And, uh, and the repo is on GitHub and I've managed to, to uh, crunch the repo down to include all of our uh, commit history as well. Which took a bit of doing, but it, uh, if you uh, uh, look at the history, it'll, it's, it's the original history from, from you know, Epoch. Well, I think for now I'll punt on Telnet because the client especially is probably pretty contentious. Um, but let's keep going down the list. Um, Alan added the R tools, like R login and RSH. And there's also they're some little bits. Oh, they are gone already? Yeah, they're, they're R login and RSH have been removed. I feel like that's uh, they're true. They're in ports. Oh, about uh, two releases ago, I think in 12. I mean, uh, 11. Yeah, they're, they're gone a while ago. They're gone. So the only thing I think we need to worry about is if there's anything in libc. Well, I think the stuff in libc just fails if it's not there. Okay. So yeah, like, the libc they're, stuff they're, is they're, okay. They are ports, so you just uh, you know you just uh, uh, you just need to install the port. Okay, I don't know, Alan. Do you remember what this is about? Are we sure? Like my my thirteen machine has RSH. We still uh, on Kiran currently. We still have uh, R time R U and R U D. Those are the three files uh, presented Sorry, the, this the is three BSD dash RCMDs package. Uh, lack of make delete all than my fault. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we can delete that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is there any? So, Manu, is there something left to be removed? Yeah, as I said, uh, our uptime, our woo, and our woo I mean, these aren't quite as bad as RSH. Yeah, sure, um, definitely. But yeah, those are the, the, the last uh, R something common. Uh, okay. they, have, they have the names. Do they have any relation? No, I mean they're not. They're not a remote shell. They don't have security problems of RSH. You can't run arbitrary commands. I mean, you have to like you have to opt into running RHUD, which is just a broadcast service, I think. Or maybe you can talk to it, and then RHU and R uptime talk to RHUD to basically get those stats. Yeah, I honestly don't know what they do. So, <laughs> I mean, so it basically you can run uptime and who against a server. That's yeah, all. I mean, I can guess what they do based on the name, but that's not something that I've ever used and not something that I will use. There's also uh, RMT. I don't know what that is. The remote mag tape. RMT uh, is built on top of some other remote access protocol. Dump. Um, UFS dump. Well, no. It, yeah, it's, it's used for dump um, or tar, but it's built on top of RSH or SSH. Um, under the covers. So even though it starts with R, it's not mm -hmm. really the same yeah. class because there's no security problems with that. Okay. Well, I've taken the R login off and I don't know that we need to add entries for other of these. Um, <clears throat> what about FTPD? Somebody <laughs> wanted to do this for 13, we didn't. Alan and I both wanted to get rid of it, but it was contentious. I've it got a port. Like, so I already ported I've got it. A port. so. I've ported yeah. it. Uh, so it's it's both the uh, client and the server, so they're in the same Git repo. Uh, do they? I do admit the client, I would miss the client if it went away. Yeah, do the client and server share code like they did for Telnet, or are they distinct? No, they don't. Okay. But I did them both anyway, just to keep them as a, yeah, yeah. keep them as a nice little package. So yeah. That might be an easier sell because you actually get something by moving FTPD. Because I, I agree the client is probably a little more contentious than the... But you said well, just, with, the server was contentious? Yeah, the server. Really? Well, just to let you know that uh, Red Hat has uh, removed FTPD. They are removing FTP client. And Google and uh, Mozilla are removing the FTP protocol from their browsers. <clears throat> Those have been deprecated. And with Chrome, at least, it's gone already. Is it gone already? OK. <clears throat> so uh, with that in mind, uh, we, can, we, we, we have two 
two uh, uh, two thought paths to approach this by. We can either follow uh, the lead of uh, of um, you know others and remove it, or we can maintain it, suggesting that there might be users who might need it. Okay, uh, so um, the fact that they're in ports uh, gives us the option, or we can we we can uh, uh, opt to leave them in there until we do uh, package base until that becomes a a reality. Well, unless there's someone jumping a bit to drive FTPD, um, I think we'll we got to keep going here. Um, yeah. Well, I can take it out if you want. I'm, I don't mind, but I think Ellen and I both uh, both tried, and then we just kind of, um, you know, the pushback was like, "Man, okay, fine, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll okay. bother for now." If you if you want to pick it up and take it out, I'm happy for that. To uh, I'm not really I'm not really ready for a big fight. I've I've uh, <laughs> that's my day off today. I'm supposed to be doing construction outside. But uh, uh, as I, uh, I've, I've been spending four days fighting at work, so I don't really want to do any more fights. Yeah, no, no fight it. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Um, so the next one is SMBFS, which needs to die. Like it really needs to die. Um, the debate is about how to have a viable replacement. Um, do we so keep I mean, waiting for the viable replacement before we remove this one? Well, so the viable replacement. Yeah, presumably the only kind of credible candidate is um, is Lumos's, uh, uh the Apple slash Lumos update of it, right? And it's 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 from the same. It shares shares ancestry with this. Um, so if we are going to actually bring that in, I think there's some value in leaving this in the tree and have it, you know, sort of show the lineage from there to from here to there. Um, okay. But uh, I I I don't think there's any real value in it um, being enabled by default or anything like. If it stays in a tree, shouldn't that be a, a vendor import from a Lumos? Well, but we're that probably we're, we're not going to. Be, yeah. but only if we're going to do future updates. <clears throat> and that one gets a little weird because I think theirs is originally a vendor import from us, basically. Just not. Yeah, it, it started with this. Apple took it and did some stuff. Then they took apples and did some more stuff. Uh, and then we'll bring it back. Okay, so that's small range and a kind of limbo. What about send mail? So Ed doesn't want to be responsible for this anymore. Does anybody want to be responsible for looking at this? I think oh, I could, implicit, I don't know. implicit in this is that we would have to use DMA by default, I think. I've been running DMA on one of my machines. It's, it's kind of, um, it, it doesn't handle aliases. I uh, only does. Um, I haven't managed to get it to work properly, uh, forwarding through my gateway. So I've reverted back to SendMail on that machine, and the rest of my machines in, in my network are are postfix. So yeah, I, there are some some issues with DMA. If you want to forward to you know uh, deal with uh, deal with uh, dot uh, dot forward and that type of thing. Yeah, I think I think our um, uh, our plan for this should be um, uh, we should really telegraph that we want to get rid of it if if that's the case. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I, I think addressing addressing that any kind of um, showstopper issues remaining with DMA is is kind of um, it kind should of be gone. Okay, so if you're looking <laughs> at at, at uh, um, I don't think it's nearly the security problem it was. Okay, no, it is. Yeah, XM is is now the 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 big one, but um, it doesn't it doesn't have much of the market share. So what one point three percent of the market share, where it, it was like the big one at one time. Uh, your largest your largest MTA out there is XM. Uh, I would not suggest that we import that. Uh, that's that's uh, that's like come and hack me. Um, I'd say open either open SMTPD or DMA, and uh, uh, allow you know point 
point users to one of the the four different ports whether they want to use that send mail yeah i think the right answer is is you use a port if you want a, a real full-blown mta exactly yeah i mean dma is, is is there yeah um, uh, uh but I'll, I'll dma i find is, a, is 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 a little substandard for what i needed to do it like i i took i as i said i i removed it off the last machine the one machine and i've reverted back to send mail until i convert that machine to postfix Okay, well, I think we need to get, if we're going to talk about needing more, we probably need to get there. Um, so we'll, we, we'll have to postpone more discussion of axing things. Let's try to go through need. It's pretty short. Um, and then we can spend the rest of our time on want. Um, and then any overflow we can do over in the hallway track, I guess. Um, so the first things in need, it looks like Manu has like several of these assigned to him. Some of these are from before. Um, there was a desire to have um, a video for Linux API or implementation in base. Is that still yeah. a thing you need, Benu? Is that still something that I need? Uh, I did uh, last year, I think, and just after I started to code something and forgot about it and reinstalled the machine without git push. So I lost everything <laughs> because I'm a dumbass sometimes. Some uh, but yeah, that's just some things that I need uh, mainly for um, not USB, uh, but everything else in the embedded world. So me PCSI, et cetera, everything camera uh, related. And yeah, that's just some things that I want to do. Uh, I don't think that I will do that before FreeBSD 14, but yeah, you never know. Okay, um, I think, so you don't think you'll get to it for 14? Okay, but that's why it's kind of- I'm, Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> you, you never know, you never know. There, there is a big summer coming and I have some camera to install in my new house, so maybe I will do something. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is a USB video class. That's, is that related? Yeah, that's related. That's the same thing. Yeah, v V4, okay. V4 R2 is a base uh, thing, and USB video class is just some driver uh, for USB webcam uh, that will use uh, the V4 R2 <coughs> base. All right. And then the last one that you had on here was um, DDC monitor control support. Yeah, so this one is uh, almost done. Uh, meaning, I, right now we expose um, I to C uh, uh, I to C uh, slash dev I to C something um, from DRM. So you can do some DDC monitor control. I've just haven't ported DDC control. Uh, that's the tool that exists on Linux. And it's very Linux centric uh, on the I2C uh, I, I2C API, uh, so it's possible to do that uh, to port it. I just don't have the time, and yeah. But kernel support is done. You, you can query with uh, the I2C uh, command uh, the edit. You can control your monitor. It's just not uh, very useful to do that with that uh, with that tool. Uh, so maybe one day I will do it. Uh, I was hoping that someone will do it, but no one step up. So yeah, I guess I will have to do it. Okay. Um, next we have <clears throat> 802.11ac. We've kind of talked about this a bit previously, I think. Do you want to add anything there, Bjorn? I think Ed said most of the things. The plan being keeping going and focusing on speed to get as contemporary speeds until the end of the year and then we'll see. Okay. Um, we've already talked a bit about Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4, so I think we can skip that. Is there anything, um, this is from last year, Ed, this one about Skylake sound controller. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any update to that? Is the firmware required? Does it, I can't remember, do we like work, but just not optimally without the firmware? Or? Uh, so we don't work at all. Um, the The microphone um, in my X1 Carbon does not work at all without without this. Um, I don't remember the exact details, but there is a like, um, 
there's a super set of, of HDA that would, that in Linux has a separate driver now um, that's needed to uh, have the hooks to drop the firmware blob in and stuff like that. Um, uh, it seems, um, uh, the, so the, the framework um, obviously has, um, framework laptop obviously has even newer um, hardware. And so I don't know if this is just a case of uh, like the, the X1 Carbon's uh, BIOS doesn't do enough configuration to get it into some compatibility mode or, or something like that. Um, the microphone, the built-in microphone on the framework works fine. Um, so, I mean, this, this may be something that is just, you know, they didn't bother doing some backwards compatibility stuff and, and no one's going to care after a little while. Um, the sound output work, it's just the mic? It's just the built-in mic, yeah. So like a, a TRRS headset works fine on it. Um, uh, on the on the um, uh, on the X one carbon. The, the okay, framework. so it's not clear, but is, is there a long term need? Do we think for the extended so, drivers? So, so originally, I, I I was concerned that um, uh, that okay. this might that that like ongoing you know future laptops would all be encountering this. Um, it looks like that's that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, so you know it's maybe a low low priority now. Um, so that, I mean this is maybe a want. Uh, instead of a need. Okay. And then uh, the last one we have at the moment is inline IPsec, which um, was there from last year. I didn't, I've, I've seen some discussions about this with um, uh, Hans Petter and uh, Kib. I don't know if there's any update we need from this. Other than that, I think it's still a work in progress. I'll check on IRC, but folks can start suggesting if they have other things they want to add. Um, I think um, uh, DCH, um, I'm not sure I don't, if I see it here, um, was going to add the uh, ARM64 iSCSI uh, boot. Um, I mean, not ARM64 not ARM specific, but iSCSI boot. Um, uh, oh, yeah, that's actually, that's a have, isn't it? Uh, oh, it's it's probably on here somewhere, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, patches, in, there's patches in review, yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, uh, that? Oh, it's even, oh, it's on here as I have, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, in IRC, um, Dave says um, uh, ARM64 specifically. Um, there's workarounds or something for AMD64, but nothing for ARM64 yet. Um, I think the, another one that uh, came out of discussion yesterday that we should we should have on the um, the need is um, uh, uh, heterogeneous core uh, scheduling. Um, so like uh, big dog little yeah efficiency cores whatever. Um, And Alder Lake, I guess, is the other name yeah, for that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, scheduler slat or support in general, um, we're going to have to start thinking about cores that have different functionality, that sort of stuff. Uh, Who's a person to put for that? When you need a stucky. Um, I, I, I'll track it. Um, Or, or uh, THJ, maybe. Oh, it's always good to volunteer someone else to do work. Yeah. Tom was interested, so. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't noticed it on RC. <laughs> yeah, there's, prob um, there's probably the latency if he's, uh, if he's watching on the stream or something. <laughs> <YouTube stream. laughs> It'll be too okay. late then. Yep. Um, all right, I've added that one. Do we have other, before we move on to once, Although, how much time do we have left? Not much. Not much. What are we supposed to stop? 10 minutes, ten minutes I think, is our. Yeah, 10 30 is our. Yeah, we have 10 minutes. Okay. Um, aye, aye, aye. So we'll try to plow through. So a lot of these things in want are from before. Um, I do yeah. actually want to kind of give priority of if, are there new things that we want that we need to add? Um, 
whether people want to add. And are these things, are there anything in here in here that we want to take out? Um, there's several here about killing giant that have Warner's name assigned to them. Um, I don't know if that's, I mean, I know we have the, the topology wrapper for reading, like wrapper around giant and new busts so that we can make progress. I think giant is still probably going to be intact for 14.0 at this point. I think I think the most we can do for 14.0 is high giant, rename it to underbar giant, and you need to have a pound to find want giant because I'm lame uh, <laughs> if def at the beginning of any of the files that need it. Uh, anything beyond that, I think you're right, is too ambitious. I, I would like at some point to do, like we've done it for syscodals. Um, one we haven't done it for yet is uh, maybe call out. I don't know how many are left that need it. Um, but interrupt handlers, I would like to move away from having an MP safe flag and have an I want giant flag. Because um, that means th that should be the exception at this point rather than the rule. Yeah, it, for everything, not just, not just interrupt handlers. That's probably the biggest one right now. Um, the MP safe, I thought the MP safe syskittle was a done deal. I think um, it pretty much is. It may, it may be that there's a few more to, to the, remove. The, the, the defaults are a done deal. They're, you're right. There, there may be a few lingering that need love that are still marked, uh, you know, needs giant. I'm trying to look through the list here. Um, I feel like uh, there's one here, Intel Isolate PMC. Did that, did uh, Alexander actually commit that? Um, it was Alexander Moten, I think, who might have merged that. He merged some recent PMC changes. I should see if those were merged. I think the event definitions are like I see them in the folder now. I don't I have no idea if it works, but Um, did we make use Linux equals yes work for ARM64 so that ARM64 can install Linux later ports? I think I saw reference in Cherry where we need to turn it off. So I feel like it must have been done. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, John? I um, support for Linux ports and for ARM64. Mm. So like install the, for the Linux later. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure um, what the size is, but. Um, too bad George is not here. I'm really curious if he's going to try to port a fourth packet filter to FreeBSD. Uh, Mitchell, you're here for maybe trying to look, well, it's a want. Um, SVE support for ARM? Is that something you're actively looking at at all? Or is anyone else actively looking at that? I am not actively looking at it anymore. So that could probably leave this list. I have it as a have. You have it as a have? I forgot, but yeah, I've got a like very early patch set. Okay. Um, uh, when it comes down for debuggery bits on that, I can help with upstream bits for that for GDB. Yeah, it's missing um, most of the bits you need. Though so it's missing um, any um, ptrace interface and doesn't handle um, signal. Well, it doesn't save around signals or anything like that. OK. But it's enough to show that um, SVE meme copy and things weren't any better than um, advanced SIMD. Or at least on the hardware we have. Okay. So my version of this is really slow. Come on. Um, I have not looked at low power stuff, um, SRIX, but that's something at some point we will, we will want.
Are there other things people, let's see, I'm gonna look on IRC. See if folks have suggested anything recently to add to the list. Um, so in the Zoom Q&A, we have a thoughts on enabling all of our proactive security things by default in installer, for example. SLR, MDS, that sort of stuff. Um, um, I know Robert would like the configuration menu for security options to go away. And things should be on or off and people should figure it out later. You the one that at the end of the installer? Yes. Yeah, I don't remember. Who Robert, added Robert's that. view is that he added all of them and he did not, in, he added about half of them and did not intend that people fuss with them during their installation. Yeah. Yeah, is that either the default should change or it should be left to people that know what they're doing. I mean, I think the menu was added um, primarily because of resistance to changing defaults, but um, the, uh, uh, the I think the biggest that, thing is it breaks the cardinal rule of don't ask the user a question they won't know the answer to. Yeah. Yeah, I think some, yeah, Jan said something to that effect in the Zoom chat. But, um, if you understand what they do, you don't need the menu because you know how to fix it. And if you need the menu, you probably shouldn't be messing with it. Um, so do we want to, so I guess and the question is the question of do we, is there a desire to change some of the defaults? I mean, we already have started changing the defaults, right? ASLR is on by default in, in current now um, and uh, will be in 13.2. Uh, I'm not sure if Marson's actually merged it or not, the, the, the swap in, in stable 13, maybe it's that's merged already. Uh, yeah, I didn't even know he was in. <laughs> he wasn't aware that, and then. I think a One nice thing. to have might, might be to, to support the IP command like uh, Cisco and, and uh, Linux do. Not not replace IF config, but at least uh, provide some some kind of tool to allow shell scripts to you know that actually uh, you know issue those commands to you know run with fewer changes. I like that idea, son. Yeah, uh, so do I. I thought about it the other day. You know, so something. <clears throat> Not for that one, but for other commands, I've been adding Linux compatibility because it's nice yeah. to be able to pull a tree and run it and not have to go, oh, I have to hack that to use gsed because yeah. rsed doesn't have this yeah. one trivial option that is yeah. easy to support. But that, that would be handy because it's 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 not only compatible with Linux, but it's also compatible with uh, uh, Cisco iOS. But I think the other big win there is other projects CI that tries to run on FreeBSD works better. Like yeah. when we have, uh, Warner, I think you did that was like the SHA sum versions and so on, right? And things like that. So that, you know, if, yeah. if some downstream port is going to run at CI on FreeBSD that their scripts don't just all explode because of the differences. Yeah, there's a number of trivial differences like that, that we, you know, we're not serving ourselves well by having our own special little thing so if we can um, provide uh, additional compatibility trivially, we should do that. You know, this isn't a, hey, we need to be like Linux and turn into Linux thing. It's a, you know, we've stubbed an awful lot of toes and, you know, it hasn't really gained us anything. Well, as we're moving, as we're moving function from, uh, from I've config to, uh, to uh, to the library, um, then I have to config and any other tool just become a front end to it, right? Kind of like something like a, a network manager, which I think we might want for maybe a desktop or something or or, or a laptop, where where people have more of a GUI kind of experience or experience more of a GUI kind of. Yeah, it's something to, to think about.
I'm trying to read back to IRC. Um, to add some of the things people have mentioned. So we're at the end of our uh, scheduled slot, uh, John. I think it's okay if we go a little bit. Um, yeah. A little bit over. Uh, yeah, I have to actually leave right now. So I've got a whole lot of other stuff that I got to get done today. So yeah. on my day off. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, Thanks for joining. Thanks, sir. Yeah. There's also two um, two more axe candidates that uh, once we're off this train of thought, I'll sneak in really quickly. Okay, well, if I miss things or other of us mix things, just feel free to keep adding to the system even afterwards. The Canadian axes, much more kinder, gentler, and polite <laughs> than Danish <What>? axes. <laughs> oh, I'd like, I'd like to add a thing to axe, please. <laughs> oh, there's two, I'm sorry. I don't sound like that one. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Ed. I, I, I apologize if I was being offensive, but <laughs> it's a lot more polite than uh, we've had in the past. I don't say a boot. I, I like it. <laughs> I didn't say a boot. <laughs> yeah. Except when I'm abusing a system. Okay. Um, what did you add, Ed, for things to ask? To ask? Uh, no, someone, someone on uh, YouTube suggested finger and finger D. Um, but the one on... Eh. The one uh, I wanted to um, I actually to use add. finger on freefall quite often. Yeah, I use it on freefall, but not remote. Like, yeah, yeah. finger D I have to use for. Uh, That's probably just security holes waiting to happen. But uh, the one I want to ask is uh, ISA sound cards. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, don't, I didn't put it on the list yet, but uh, I think there's. Uh, Once there's we kill the, go ahead. Ed. Uh, there's some sentimental uh, desire to keep them, but I don't think there's any practical um, reason. And my motivation was, um, you know, I was I was taking a quick look at giant uh, cases um, along with what Warner was was talking about, just to kind of get a sense. And yeah, there's, um, you know, it's it's getting rid of the ISIS sound cards um, avoids the uh, the need to consider them anymore. They're all giant, uh, giant battled. Once we kill the ISA sound cards, what other ISA things uh, are left apart maybe from the floppy driver, which I've tried to kill in the past. And I've also argued shouldn't be killed in the past and has some sentimental value. That's the only, and SIO attachment or uh, UART attachments. Well, I mean, you have to ignore things that are the legacy LPC bus things like you are and so forth. Um, There's those T1E1, Russian T1E1. <laughs> not yeah. Sure, we should don't, be don't, don't start Don't start the discussion. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't end well. Me and Ed uh, can attest of I'll, that. It doesn't I'll, I'll, hold tight, well. I'll hold tight Gleb and you guys can commit it and then we'll see. Oh wait, I probably couldn't hog tie Ed if he or um Glove unless he was sleeping. Okay, I guess oh, we should add something somewhere about the security menu. What category does that go in? Is that a want? Axe. Or is that an axe candidate? <laughs> I mean, there, there's there's two two separate parts. There's the axe the menu um, uh, part, but but related to that is the what should the defaults be? Um, I mean, we can we can certainly get rid of the menu and, and leave the defaults for another um, you know aside. But I think we really want to answer both together. No, I, I agree. Don't you know. So, where is is that a is that a need to revisit? Security defaults. Yeah. JRM wants us to uh, ask TCSH. No. <laughs> I think it was a it was a joke. Yeah, that's a hard no. <laughs> I'd be fine with it. That's a 
Yeah, over my dead body, no. <laughs> and John and I are the reasonable ones here in this debate. <laughs> well, he did say important CSH. Um, that would be fine. I mean, I, I could maybe, I could maybe live with that. Apart from license issues, you know, more shells is fine. Killing seashell makes people grumpy. I still now, yeah. like, I, newer jails and VMs have had a, one of the first things I do when I log in is go, oh, that all doesn't work. I have to change my shell to back to CSH. Oh, well. For root. Yeah, just to be clear, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ed, am I going to put you down as a stucky for revisiting the... Map? All right, yeah. I put you as a stucky for moving the menu, so... Um, uh, MW um, uh, at is, uh, is pretty interested in this sort of stuff, too, so... Okay, I'll add that. Okay, um... I think at this point we can probably go to the hallway track for what's left. Um, and peak folks can have a well-earned break until our next talk. So we've got, let's see, what is our time? I think I'm up next after the break yeah. talking about- uh, Yeah, I think we have a pre-commit. Oh no, that's yesterday. That's yeah, yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> mode is in about <laughs> 23 minutes. Oh, yay. Okay. All right. I might actually get my slides done. Oh, wait, is my mic on? <laughs> You could start your slides. I haven't right. done that in 15 years. All right. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes, y'all. So we'll see you over in the hallway track. Uh, we'll be back for Warner's talk on community user mode.